seven years, I do pharma projects. A lot of money. I'm talking about millions. Everything what I see in uh, VR is there. You make your design better. Welcome to Virtual Visionaries. My name is Angel Say, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Resolve. We build software that makes it really easy for people to walk through buildings before they're actually built. And this is a video series where I'm interviewing pioneers in the design and construction industry who are using virtual and augmented reality to revolutionize the way that buildings are built. Every year, over $600 billion are lost due to rework in the construction industry. Mistakes are found at the construction site and the work has to be redone, additional materials have to be reordered, and time is lost. With VR, a lot of these issues can be prevented and reviewed ahead of time in a digital version of the building. I got to sit down with Victor Nemet from PharmaPlan. He's an expert in the engineering and construction of pharmaceutical manufacturing facilities, the factories that manufacture the drugs that save lives around the world. So let's see what Victor had to say about the way that VR is revolutionizing the way our drug factories are built. Victor, thanks so much for sitting down to speak with me. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking about how you've used VR on the projects that you've worked on and learning more about your background. So without further ado, Victor, I'd love to hear more about you and your background. Yes, my background, I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, I'm working here in pharma plan. Uh, more than five years. I'm leading here a team of eight people. Uh, we support beam use cases in our pharma plan projects uh, and we of course help developing the standards MEP. We also have an architecture team and a third team for the process. We do, I would say, 99% pharma projects. My, in my previous company, I started with pharma. So last uh, seven years, I do pharma projects. So let's transition a little bit into into VR and your journey with VR. I'm curious, you know, when did you first come across VR and become interested in it? I would say I didn't have any interests uh, for gaming or something like that. But in a project there where we started with Resolve, it just showed me uh, another perspective to that what I was doing. After that, I really enjoyed it. I had a really uh, good connection with the customers. They were using it also. We met there in Resolve and uh, we were working. I must say I spent like daily, sometimes six hours using it. For me, it's not just a playing tool or something like that. For me, it's a tool that I can really use good in my work. That's why I like it. The thing is, we had a really good design in this project. And then they started uh, doing the construction site. And then I went a couple of times there. And then I realized actually everything what I see in uh, VR is there. And that was one of the drivers. At the end, uh, it happened that I go through the construction site and I notice the things that were not in VR, that are not on the place where they should be. And so I spent hours and hours there. You're saying you, you felt basically like you had already been there before, even though you hadn't physically. And then you go there for the first time and everything, everything feels very familiar. And then when things weren't like you remembered in the model, were those issues or were those things that you then ask questions about? When you spend so much time there, then exactly, when you go to the uh, construction site, you're still there. They were cha doing changes on the construction site that, that were not able to come out from the model for some reason, or there was something f forgotten, yeah, like just one fan for, I don't know, lab laboratories or something like that. But it was just not there where it should be. It was in totally another area. Okay, but that came then later back into the model, into the as-built. Interesting. And so that that helped you build a better as-built 
would you say? Mm, yeah. Yeah, we found a lot of places that are not maintainable later. Uh, for the maintenance team, it was uh, important that they know where are the areas that they cannot just walk through. They have to duck or whatever to go through. So that's what they already know. Are there specific challenges that you think are unique to, to pharma construction projects? Complexity. The equipment layout is... so. There are constant changes since they are investing a lot of money then they always add a little bit more and to try to maybe get something what was not considered before into the design and then that impacts uh, the whole what is behind it yeah we call it uh, engineering shift yeah if you change the machine from this size to another size then it's going to change the Flows of the, I don't know, heating water, uh, demand uh, for the clean media, and so on and so on. Yeah? And then that impacts everything back to the technical area, for example. When you change something, then that changes the, uh, not just two medias like heating and cooling, it changes 10 other medias. Yeah? And then you need to bring all those pipes through already crowded area. Yeah? And then of course, customer wants to save money, uh, that his building is smaller, yeah, and so on and so on. Part of it is, like you said, making sure it, it hits the budget, it, it fits the size constraints. What about the the maintainability of it, right? Because once the building is delivered, then you've got 10 years, 20 years of the factory running. Uh, you have to make sure it runs efficiently. How do you think about that as a, as a pharmaceutical designer? They have yearly maintenance. They have strict dates where they stop everything and do the maintenance for two or three weeks. And then that costs them a lot of money. I'm talking about millions. When that happens, they have to be fast. And if your design doesn't allow that, they know how, uh, who to call later. We, we need to think about it from the beginning, making the plant uh, maintainable is a priority. Yeah, just d during the project phases, I mean, architecture uh, structure starts before everything else. Uh, you need to already define the openings through the concrete slabs and walls. If you make mistake, it's uh, not so easy to repair it. So let's talk a little bit more about the the way that you use, you know, VR on these pharma projects. Maybe walk me through a typical meeting that you would have with a pharma with the pharma client you worked with and how you would use VR, how they would use VR and, and what were you looking for in in the VR environment? We name it usually 3D review meeting. I sit a couple of days before that, I prepare myself. Uh, in this case I use uh, Resolve. I already uh, put the issues or annotations uh, all over the model. And then I go like that prepared into the meeting. Okay. So you would look for things ahead of time in VR yourself? Yes. In this case, uh, we were showing the design flaws or our suggestions and questions what could be done that, that uh, comes out better. There was uh, five buildings, uh, 46 models. So it was a huge model. So choose an area, we do that, we go through it. After that, we create issues, we push them into BIM 360, and then we wait. What's an example that you remember, you know, of something where being able to review it in VR had a significant impact? Walkable ceilings. That is... Uh, totally normal in a pharma project. Uh, you, you have the clean rooms and everything what is important happens above and those areas needs to be walkable. Yeah? Not just that you can step on it, but you can really go through every corner and reach all the components. Okay, and so you'd go into VR to basically perform that procedure virtually? Yeah. I would show the customer, okay, this is the suggested way. Yeah, here, I don't know, we are missing the railing because you can fell down. 
Now you have there three, four meters of free fall. We need a railing here. Here we are missing the staircase that we even come to this uh, area. Here we need to jump over it because we have a steel beam and those things. So when, when you're wearing the VR headset, um, you know, going through this simulated procedure of a clean room um, maintenance routine, why was it better to go into the headset? Yeah, you are there in front of the duct, which doesn't allow you to go through. You can then do the measures. Okay, if you say here, I have only 80 centimeters, will you really duck here and go through with your suitcase full of, I don't know, heavy things that you are carrying around? Or should we move this duct at least half a meter higher? And they say, okay, yeah, I have a big stomach. I cannot through, go through there, but the other guy, he's smaller. Haha, <laughs> they're laughing. Yeah, but at the end, yeah, let's move that. And so for like a, that cleaning room example, for, for pharma plan, for the owner, like how do you quantify that impact, right? Like how do you know, yeah, this is, this is worth the time that we are spending? Because you were saying, you know, sometimes you were spending six hours a day. Um, every minute counts on design and construction projects. How do you make sure that that time is worth it? You need to know what do you need to deliver to the customer. Uh, I mean, this this clean room that's going to be sealed at one moment. When I say sealed, yeah, there's going to be cleaned, and then you cannot go inside just like it will be open only in uh, disaster cases. If you open it, that then starts a chain of reaction doing the qualification again, you need to throw everything away because it's polluted and so on and so on. So th this, this is what is for them so important, yeah? They go there to clean it, but even by cleaning it, they are not going to break this chain. So that's why everything happening outside and that has to function really good. That's why it's called GMP, good manufacturing practice. And that includes also the maintainability for this clean room. It sounds like you've grown to love VR. Uh, you've enjoyed using it. What's the feedback from your colleagues uh, as well? We have our design tools like Revit. And they should do the design using that, yeah, not VR. You're not going to draw a pipe, draw a duct, and then put a VR and look if it's good. Yeah, you have for that your program. Do it with it. They are interested. They like it when they see it. Some of them are, mm, okay, you're showing my flaws. For me, it's better to show it and correct it. It's not, I'm not doing that because I don't like you. It's because we need to deliver. We also, when we are presenting something to the customer, we say, we are working on it. We have still three months. We are aware of all collisions. If you see the something, it's okay that it's there. I love that. And I honestly think that's advice that I would give to more people. And I'm glad you're saying it, right? Is the expectation setting is really what could make or break the way that you use VR or any BIM, really, right? If you acknowledge the things that are in there, it's okay, right? You say, hey, there's floating fire extinguishers. We just haven't gotten to coordinating the fire protection, right? Don't don't waste your time calling every single one out. That's fine. Uh, and that just makes everybody more efficient. And maybe this is a good segue into advice for people who are trying to get VR going either within their practice or within their project. What do you think are some of the things that it takes to get it successfully accepted since it sounds like that's something that, that you had success with? You need to have a good use case for it. Then uh, it pays out. And the, be the best benefit is that you make your design better. Oftentimes people will hit a barrier where maybe a an executive or a project manager doesn't want to use it, what's your advice to try to convince them that it's worth it? I connect that with space management. The customer says that uh, I don't need a space manager. You need to deliver so that it's everything plausible. But I say, I want to involve you that you see what are you getting and then you can impact that with your experience. And that's for me a business case that they see what they're getting before it's there. What is it that you like about Resolve? It's integrated in uh, BIM 360 really fast. I published it too, and it's already prepared with the latest changes. This is a simple program, totally user-friendly. What are some of your, uh, what are some of the things you're excited about with developments in, in VR uh, or AR? 
it gets better. It, the graphics are better. I mean, who knows how would what I would do in my life if if I had that thirty years ago. Well, Victor, I I really appreciate your um your time. I really enjoyed it.